We're going to bring in uh, Tim Scott. We're going to switch these out. I want to play SOT number 17, and we're going to bring in the senator from South Carolina. Watch. He said we were all bought and paid for. And I thought about that for a little while and said, you know, I can't imagine how you could say that knowing that you were just in business with the Chinese Communist Party and the same people that funded Hunter Biden, millions of dollars, was a partner this of yours as well. It's not nonsense. So look, here's what I, 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 I want to respond. These, these are good people who are tainted by a broken system. And it's not the fault I, I of anybody who's involved. Some of us are tainted. Excuse me. Line is when you say excuse me. Not. Thank you for speaking while I'm interrupting. Literally. While I'm speaking. Well, literally. No, you said bought and paid so we just played the back and forth between you and Vivek Ramaswamy, where yes. he was talking about, you know, bought and paid for and the whole concept of you're good people on tonight's stage. Yes. And then last time you were bought and paid for in there. Yeah. What did you think about that? He said, listen, they're bought and paid for. We're going to make sure before they enter my cabinet, some of these people, that all of that is going away. It's, it's just a tad bit hypocritical. One of the things you have to do is have a good time on the stage. But you also should tell the truth. And what he said last time was wrong. And the more information comes out about his dealings in China, the more concerned we should all be. It's not a surprise, then, if, if in fact, he wants to turn Taiwan mm -hmm. over to China. China by 2028, now we have a fact pattern that helps us see why. So you started out, and um, everybody, I mean, you look at the Internet, the response in the crowd was, Tim Scott brought his energy. He brought his game tonight, and you did. You came out of the gate strong, and then it kind of tailed off. You were in the first 30 minutes, you had three questions, maybe yes. three and a half. You jumped in there, and then there was a while, Senator, where you weren't called on for a while. You even made the joke like, hey, can you, can you see me over here? I am really hard to miss on that stage. I'm a big boy with a bald head, and so I could not understand understand for the life of me how the moderators, three people, could not find my side of the stage. And they skipped me time and time and time again. Some candidates got three, three questions during that time. And I got zero. Yeah, do you feel Frustrating. like, it, do you feel like, I mean, we talked to some of the moderators and they say, you know, it's one of those things where you're not trying to put anybody out. It's just the flow. It's the way it flowed three questions to you in the first 30 minutes. And then the next 30 minutes, you don't get many questions or well, any questions. I would just say, say it's flow. I would just say, add it up. At the end of the day, add it up. Because what we want is the American people to have a chance uh -huh. to hear what we have to say about the issues that define our future and impact their lives today. We had an opportunity to do that on some of the issues, but did not even get a question on crime or education. I founded the School Choice Caucus 10 years ago. Yep. I'm a guy who went to four different elementary schools by the fourth grade. Having a conversation about the power of education and being completely carved out of that conversation, I'm stunned. Was it your sense that it might have stopped your momentum a little bit that you built up in the first 35 minutes? Well, it certainly would be helpful to continue in the conversation as opposed to being carved out of the conversation. I don't think they did it on purpose. Don't get me wrong. I just think they have to be mindful of the importance of looking to their right and not just asking four people on their left. The question was asked, and nobody really participated except maybe Chris Christie to a certain point about who do you vote off the island? Yeah. Where do you go from here? Where does the Tim Scott campaign go from here? Do you see a mathematical way for you to be the, the contender in this party? Oh, of course. I would not be on the stage, uh, on the debate stage, but I did not see that. Here's what we have to do. We have to have an opportunity to tell the American people why this nation can continue to do for them uh -huh. what it's done for me. If we can continue to show up and talk about restoring hope, creating opportunities, and protecting America, which means back in the blue, closing our southern border, and standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with President Xi, realizing it's not the strength of President Xi. It's the weakness of President Biden. Getting that done in front of enough voters, I believe the contrast in style and substance is the winning ticket. You and I talked earlier about this, and, and I'll let you go, Senator, because I know you're busy. We talked earlier about the back and forth with you and Nikki Haley about the curtains, the State yeah. Department. And, and there was a lot of comments on that saying, what was that about? I'm not sure that was effective for either one of those candidates. Yeah, so, so one of the challenges is that if you're going to talk about spending, when you have an opportunity to be a fiscal hawk, be one. The fact of the matter is she offered an increase in taxes, $200 million for South Carolinians. Yep. That is a, that's a problem for someone who stands there and talks about spending issues. 
in a state as small as South Carolina to increase our gas tax by 10 cents is what she offered. $200 million. That's just the wrong direction for our party. I've never increased taxes. Yeah. Lastly, uh, going forward, what are you looking at? What's your next benchmark? What do you have to hit for Tim Scott and his campaign to go forward? Do you have to do well in Iowa? Do you have to do well at the next debate? Is there something where you say, listen, this is this is the writing on the wall and I need to follow it? Yeah, the writing on the wall says, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> keep showing up. Yeah. Keep having a good time and tell the American people about the greatness of America. We are that city on the hill. Yeah. Senator, you're a good man. Thank you, sir, for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're bringing in Doug Burgum now, the governor 